Okay, this is uh, your second video on the namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. Um, this will be a little bit shorter video since we had an introduction last week and we uh, discussed some overarching themes that the book is is investigating. Um, really for this week I have some, some questions I want you to consider and some uh, elaboration of some themes that you might want to write about for your reading response that's due this Friday. Um, you'll notice also on the syllabus that it makes mention of the model minority myth that we in America have ever since the 1960s assigned to different populations, different minority immigrants and ensuing generations that come after them. And uh, oftentimes there are problems that are associated with this seemingly, you know, um, well-meaning terminology. And the, I've attached uh, in your Blackboard folder for this week an article, a scholarly article that looks at this particular issue, the, the idea of the model minority and how it, it affects higher education and, and where the concept comes from and how it's often... Uh, misapplied and, and how it's very destructive in fact even in its creation um, so you'll be able to look at that if you want to and you can dig as deep into that article as you want but it's it's an interesting uh, read for those of you that aren't familiar even with the concept it'll give you a little bit of a background on where that that comes from it also sort of opens up a, a different debate which if you pour into it even just on the internet, let alone into scholarly articles and and places where it might be treated more academically, is the question of over whether Indians are considered Asian, uh, and you'll find a little bit different answers no matter um, where you go. But in terms of that that model minority myth, typically what it, it will point towards is the Asian American and the Asian American success in you know, both an academic sense and a financial ses sense and an assimilation sense, all of that sort of indicating that they are doing it right and, and why can't uh, the other minorities and immigrants to this country follow this particular path. Uh, and it, it comes from a 1966 um, term coined by a particular writer, and the, the article will make mention of this, who felt as if this was a positive um, label to put on somebody rather than a, a negative defining um, caricature of that particular person or group. So uh, it's an interesting idea to get inside of, and it certainly might apply here. We have a family... Uh, led by the, the first generation uh, immigrant to the United States, Ashok and Ashima, who uh, both are in culture shock for the first part of the book and who, before they have children, they are, you know, m met by several different, you know, concepts of a new land that they don't understand, but yet... We know that Ashok is very successful academically, and he's got a good job, and he's he's making headway in his career, and and he's he's quote unquote plugged into the system, uh, but yet the cultural aspects of the of their new experience are still difficult for them. And Ashima, in particular, when she's left at home in the early parts of the book, and she's trying to to sort of get along by herself and combat the loneliness is uh, very much um, sort of oppressed by, by the cultural dominance of, of a new world. And even though we see that these are not, you know, struggling financially or struggling career-wise um, cultural identities, we see that they are being uh, sort of aligned with the outsider, the immigrant identity. 
And by the time that Gogol and his sister come along in the second generation, we see that they are equally as benefit benefiting from a success created by their parents and their parents' generation. And they are pursuing, you know, greater career goals as well, higher education, good jobs, you know, putting money away, you know, plugging in very well while still experiencing elements of discrimination and stereotyping. Uh, so, you know, on the surface, we might be able to say, look at them, the, the, this is how you do it. This is how you become successful in America, which is what that model minority myth uh, really wanted to, to flush out and, and get us to understand. Um, you know, they're living the American dream. They're, you know, they're doing something right. Uh, but it, it's also sort of limiting and confining uh, in, in a very, very um, stereotypical way. Uh, and you've all seen this, you know, outside of the book and, and in, you know, a variety of different places. You've seen... Um, variations of, of that model minority myth you know whether you went to school with children who who um, parents would comment about and or you know I personally I went to school with with uh, quite a few uh, Vietnamese students and you know you could hear talk from from parents in the community and you know that they were being you know, pressured into doing this by their families and and they had this sort of imbued in their culture that they needed to be good and it was in particular always stereotypically mathematics this was the idea that they were somehow geared towards it right and and that's all sort of feeding into this this creativity of of a myth right and you know stereotypes and and you know sort of cultural beliefs uh, feed that. So we've got to understand how that works here. And this article that I've linked to here will will get into that a little bit more and, and talk about the ways that it's not only created, but the way that it's hurting uh, not just the, the, the people themselves, but uh, the community around them. So anyhow, that's enough on that bit. Uh, what I also want to point you towards is some, some questions that I want you to think about as you're, you're completing the novel for this week. Um, we talked last time about, you know, Gogol's early days, you know, sort of separating himself from his name, separating himself from his um, Indian traditions being sort of resurrected by his parents and their, their Bengali community here in the United States. And Gogol and and his sister, to a lesser extent, we only see a little bit of her in the first half of the novel. Uh, they're they're sort of shamed by this, you know, in the, in the way that my parents are so lame, but also in this this sort of cultural, can't we be more American? But uh, and, and that's very typical, right? We see that in in a lot of the other books that we've looked at as well. Um, but I want to back up and and maybe look at some aspects of of that public and private world that is uh, really played out in Gogol's naming. And in fact, that's, that's the essence of the book, the namesake, is that you know, at, at home and amongst his, his intimate family and community, he is literally um, named in a particular way, a f you know, familiar, very uh, private and intimate name that carries with it the privacy of this this particular lifestyle and out in the world he is supposed to at least have a public moniker that that creates with it a, a sense of a different identity this is who he is out here and this is who he is at home and it, it creates you know although I don't think that in 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 life it's supposed to create this division but certainly in this novel it creates this division over you know how He's supposed to be seen, and Gogol, for himself, you know, is conflicted about this. And he's, he's, um, you know, we talked last time, or I mentioned last time, how you know early on he's he's uh, a mix of you know bothered and embarrassed by this name, but yet when he goes to school, 
he doesn't want to be called by the new formal name because he doesn't respond to it. He doesn't recognize it as him. And then again later on, he adopts that formal name because he's embarrassed and, and thinks that his pet name, informal name, is is silly. And, and he wants to to uh, you know have control over identifying himself, but we might question where that, that control is being... Uh, born. It, it seems to be born from an outside force. How are others going to think of him? Um, when his father finally tells him, Ashok finally tells him about why he was named Gogol, why he was given this name, why it means so much to his father. And it's very, very uh, influential, powerful moment in his father's life. Uh, conveyed in the naming of his son that he doesn't give him for a long time, right? He doesn't give him that information until much later. And one of the questions I have on my list here is, is why do we believe his father holds that back from him for so long? But when he does give him that information, uh, it changes. It, it sort of clicks with Gogol a little bit to understand that, that there's more than just his father's favorite author being... Uh, transmitted through his name. It, it, it suggests this, this sort of miracle existence, this, this gift of life that his father felt uh, needed to be passed on. And he, he conveys this to him uh, in a very private and intimate moment later that um, Gogol, at a later point in his life, has to digest and sort of think about differently, think about who he is differently. Beyond that, when his uh, wife, at the end of the novel, um, Moshima, when she tells her group of friends about Gogol's changing of his name, his, his secret, his private, intimate uh secret that she he shared with her she's giving away that intimate moment that private conversation that that meaningful substantial um power that his father and he had shared and it it, it bothers him that she so flippantly throws it around you know where he's sort of grappled with this all his life this private and public you know identity she comes in and just kind of offers it up to, to these friends that aren't even really his friends, they're more her friends, uh, and uh, throws it out there for them as a bit of conversation, and he's bothered by this. And it, 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 it seems to cut him uh, and cut his vulnerability. And remember, if you've read this far, if you haven't, I'm only giving a little bit of a spoiler here. Um, Moshima is is uh, Indian American as well and and so the the onset of their marriage is very very um, much a oh look he's found you know a, a similar identity in in her and that she's had to deal with her parents and the and the acculturation and assimilation of of both cultures bring being brought into one so they have a similar shared and their parents have sort of pushed them into each other also kind of reflecting that that old cultural custom of arranged uh, marriages that Ashim and, uh, and Ashok uh, personified at the beginning of the novel and so it suggests that that Gogol is finally on a path where he's got understanding and somebody else will will under, understand what it is to to live his life the way he does but this moment sort of begins the the disconnection between the two of them and, and it's evident that that she isn't fully engaged with his you know complex double uh, identity and she offers it up in a way that maybe it should be kept between a married couple. He shared this information with her in a way that was, uh, you know, giving, and, and she gives it away. So, um, some other questions 
that I really want you to think about in this second half of the novel. And some of these are a little bit more wide open than, than, than not. You know, we see Gogol, and I mentioned this in the last video, uh, looking towards his life, you know, college and his job and, you know, uh, the future, etc. He was sort of at times moving away, turning his back on his family, you know, not, not in any sort of hateful, detestful way, but in a way that, that he wants independence and he also wants to, to sort of embrace a generic version of his American quote-unquote self more. Uh, but in the process, we also see him uh, choosing women that might reflect some of these wishes as well. So we see, uh, first early on, we see his uh, relationship with Ruth, and then the elongated relationship with Maxine, and finally this relationship marriage with Mushima at the end. Uh, and, you know, this runs in pretty much direct contrast to the relationship that we see between his parents, Ashok and Ashima, who are, you know, a product of an arranged marriage and, and um, the only m moment of intimacy that, that exists is when, you know, Ashima is sort of peeking in at the suitors who are coming uh, to visit her parents and, and she's, I believe she's attracted to his shoes and the movie shows you uh, her stepping inside his shoes as this moment of, of you know, curious exploration of what's to become uh, of her and this man who happens to be in her living room. And so it's, it's different to see, you know, the very free and freeing aspects that, that Gogol looks for in, in the women's, uh, or the women that, that he chooses to be with. And, and especially, as I said, the elongated relationship with Maxine, we see uh, a lot of uh, these very conscious differences uh, that exist between, you know, her world and his. And he's, you know, it's a very, very uh, affluent and, you know, in, in some ways culturally rich, but also very culturally, you know, confined, right? It, this this particular thing means culture in that type of world. And, you know, it's it's also sort of glossed over with this J. Crew, you know, Dawson's Creek sort of <laughs> vacation style living. Uh, and, and, and nowhere do we see this more, you know, directly pointed out is uh, then in the the brief stopover at his parents' house on the way to to the lake house, and we see this direct contrast where everything appears to be, you know, oh, I'd love to meet your parents, and you know, everything. There's no real, you know, obvious or blatant conflict or tension, but it's all very much, you know, stirring within Gogol, and 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 so these choices uh, of these women represent that that inner conflict in some way you know how and, and and why can we take that um sort of life pursuit balled up in in, in these women and these lifestyles uh, how and why is this a part of of gogol's choosing what he wants out of life and in some ways is that different than his parents and must he negotiate that by the time uh, we get to the falling action of the book? And I'm not going to spoil the, the ending for you at this point, but understand that there will be resolution, you know, in some form, right? We, we don't necessarily believe that, oh, everything's great and fine, but there will be some sort of uh, conclusion to, to this uh, openness over uh, how much of his family he's devoted to and where he makes those connections, where he wants to keep those connections going along. And then finally, one last question. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but, but I want you to think about this. Um, why is it that, that Ashok is so um, intent, especially early on, at, at just keeping this this 
monumental moment from his past the 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 train wreck and his and his recovery and his you know devotion to the miraculous gift of his life after this why does he keep this from Gogol when it seems like making this connection at least in our readers mind would be an obvious way to uh, reach out to his son and bridge that gap that is forming and, and though it, it might seem obvious and it might seem sort of why don't you just tell you know but in, in some ways I think Lahiri, you know, really, really subtly probes the difficulties and the complexities uh, over that that generational communication, and it, 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 in some ways, it's sort of symbolized by the 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 collection of Gogol writings that he gives to him on his graduation day, right? And it and it, and it misses it misses the mark. He puts it away, and it's not. You know anything that that he wants to hear or receive at that time, and he thanks him and and tosses it aside, and moves on with his life. And so it sort of symbolizes this, you know, reaching out a little bit, but the son is not receiving it, not ready to receive it just yet. Uh, and it's part of that, you know, idea that that Ashok may have been guarding that particular part of his life. And only wanting to let it out over time, uh, I I don't know. You you, I want you to, to consider this as you're going forward, and and certainly again not going to spoil, but th- this this uh, idea of connection with his father is something that that we almost feel like we have to see at some point played out in in the novel, and and it's it's something that needs to be returned to. Um, I'll leave it at that for this week. Those are some things that, that you're going to see um, you know, extrapolated a little bit more, and you can, you can pull some things out from there to, to base your reading response on or go in an entirely different direction. Um, uh, for later this week, I, I'll put up a real short video on your um, next assignment, which has to do with a, a critical text review. So be watching for that. Uh, check out the, the article on model minority mythology that, that I'm going to be posting on your website and get your reading assignment done and your reading response for this Friday. Thanks very much. See ya later.